yesterday. Let's bring in NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard live from National Harbor. Vaughn, what did day one look like? Hey, yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, this is a scene that uh, comes annually here, and it used to be the who's who across the Republican Party, and now, really, for the first time since Donald Trump's rise, you're seeing notable names not here. RNC Chair Ronna McDaniel, Mike Pence, Ron DeSantis, and this is much more looking like a room full of Trump loyalists ahead of his big speech here tomorrow, but we wanted to take the camera off of the tripod, and for those who are not lucky enough to be here this weekend and wanted to give you a behind the scenes look of what this place here looks like. Take a look. We are at the 2023 CPAC. Yes. This place, CPAC, used to be conservatives weekend out. It was the annual gathering for the who's who across the Republican Party. The conservative movement is alive and well. George H.W. Bush made the rounds here and Dick Cheney, George W. Bush and John McCain. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan, too. I don't see this great divide in our party. What I see is a vibrant debate. But the rise of Donald Trump has changed these halls. <laughs> Nikki Haley, Mike Pompeo, Ted Cruz are here. But RNC Chair Ronna McDaniel, Mike Pence, and Ron DeSantis are not. What does it say, though, from the Trump team's perspective about Governor DeSantis not being here? Uh, you know what? I think, um, you know, the absence speaks volumes. I know who is going to show up, because he does every time, which is President Trump. Also not Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy. What does it say about you being here versus the likes of a Mitch McConnell or even a Kevin McCarthy? Uh, well, if you keep going down the line, you're, you're going to name enough names where I'd say, well, I'm not a rhino, and that's why I'm here. But other members of Congress are. How has CPAC changed since the rise of Donald Trump? Well, look, CPAC is always raucous and wonderful. It's, there's a, an electricity to it, and I think there's been more of an electricity. Other Republicans, including Speaker McCarthy, are not here. You are here. Why are you at CPAC? Are you kidding me? Listen, these are the activists of our party. We can't do anything without them. And then there are presidential candidates you maybe haven't heard about. Perry Johnson, one of them. Mr. Johnson, you got a shot for 2024? Well, I believe I wouldn't be here otherwise. This is Media Row, but they're all right-wing outlets. Chat TVT. Turns out it is very politically biased. It's the single best news source in the country. And who is War Room? Steve freaking Bannon, of course. Is CPAC the grassroots? Absolutely, it's the grassroots. This has become the grassroots. The attendees here... This is Trump one. ...largely remaining Trump loyalists. Why are we at CPAC? Donald Trump! Who do you got in 2024? Trump. 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 And this is the merchandise expo room that also includes a mock oval office. And all of this ahead of Trump's appearance for the final major speech on Saturday night. And what does it say about Donald Trump coming here this weekend? That's awesome. You know, I play golf with him about once a month and, uh, you know, he's ready to go. He's got a lot of energy. I'm anxious to see him get out on the trail and start touching flesh and telling people what he's going to do. In today's lineup here on this Friday, you've got the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene taking the stage here in just about two hours from now, and then Matt Gates. You've got Lauren Boebert, and tonight's headliner at the Ronald Reagan dinner is uh, Gary Lake. And you've also got, we should note, two presidential candidates, Nikki Haley, as well as Ramaswamy, and a potential presidential contender. That would be his former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Mika? Uh, well, let me ask you really quickly, Vaughn. What, what, what about uh, the attendance? I had some people sending me pictures with some breakouts uh, or some sessions with a lot of empty chairs. Uh, it looked like uh, by the time you were interviewing, it looked fairly crowded. But uh, were there uh, more empty seats there than usual? Right. Out in the halls, you know, there's a pretty good crowd that is out there, you know, trying to shake the hands of the likes of a Don Jr. or Kimberly Goldfoyle or a Mike Lindell. But here inside, it was definitely more of a sparse crowd here. We expect that usually on a Friday or Saturday to pick up here. But it's definitely notable. I was just one year ago down in Florida uh, when uh, they were holding CPAC last year. And at the time then, there was still more consolidation of support around the likes of Donald Trump. You had 
even, you know, former uh, or Senator Josh Hawley, who is in attendance, numerous others who are not here, notably this time around. Of course, the allegation against Matt Schlapp has made it easier for some to stay away. But this is really kind of a dividing line now of power structure within the Republican Party now. You know, there is, you know, Charlie Kirk and Turning Point USA that have sort of their own separate operation going. And there are some who see them as the future of the conservative movement, as opposed to CPAC and Matt and Mercedes Schlapp here. And that is where there was some hesitancy among other Republicans like Mike Pence and Ron DeSantis to come here. And when you were talking to the attendees here, one person after the other told me that they were backing Donald Trump for 2024 here. And so very much so, CPAC is looking like, you know, a, a, a smaller version of a Trump rally as opposed to one that is really scouting the rest of the field. Nonetheless, Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo are showing up here this afternoon. And I think that'll give us a better sign here of the openness of uh, Republicans here over the months ahead to tune into a little different message from that of Donald Trump. NBC's Von Hilliard, thank you for that report. We look forward to hearing more.